Hello and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explorer we're going to continue to look at shaders. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we've already done one explore on how to make a basic shader. We've got vertex shaders and fragment shaders and on the 2D canvas we tend to work with the fragment shaders. So we saw how to make a gradient in that and talked about uniforms so that we could change it with a slider. So you should go back and check out that explore if this is your first time coming in and you want to find out how to use shaders in Zim. In this Zim explore we're going to see how to bring in shaders from Shader Toy and talk a little bit more about uh, shader code. So you can get to it from here, uh, clicking that, or this Zim 016, or if in the future it's uh, we were in 017 or 8 or whatever, then you can come back to 016 there. And there's shaders right here. This takes us to the mini site of shaders. And uh, most of these are out on the what's called shader toy. So for instance, this one right here, there we can go find it on shader toy, per doomp, like so. And this is what Shader Toy looks like. You can copy all of this code here and stick it into Zim. So that's what we're going to do. But rather than that, I'm going to search on landscape. And hit enter. And let's try one. So how about this one with the warning? Ooh, pretty. So we copy all this stuff copy. One thing to watch out for is make sure it doesn't have other channels or multiple channels. They might appear here, I think. And that uh, would mean that it might, not, I don't think it's going to work in Zim. Where if it's got one channel, it'll work. And if it's uh, not for VR as well, I don't know what it looks like with VR. Uh, by the way, we have these things called uniforms. And here are all of the default uniforms that come uh, including channel stuff that come with shader toy and we also have resolution time delta time frame rate etc i think we don't have the channels though all right so just watch if any of the if any of it is going across multiple channels uh, currently zim doesn't have it but uh, it doesn't look like this code example does so we should be good and what we'll do is copy all this Did I copy it Copy. Hmm, might need a, a Zim template first. Anyway, we'll reduce this down and we're going to go paste it into our code. So we'll make under shaders here, I'm going to make a new file called landscape.html. And we would get the Zim template. I can just type the word template and get it, but you guys, well, I'm going to do that template. And we will call this landscape. And I'll show you where we got that template from in just a sec. Shader landscape. And down here in the template, I'm going to say const fragment for our fragment shader is equal to, and use the back ticks up in the left-hand corner there and paste all of our code from the shader into the back ticks. So there's the end of the back tick. And this is the shader code. Oh, okay, well, let me scroll this way. That's the shader code, and there's the start of it. All right, let me show you where we got the template from. Out on the Zim site, zimjazz.com, we went code and hit copy the template. That copies your template. The template comes with a new circle in it, like that. My template that I just did didn't have the new circle. So I deleted the new circle and it's just put your code here. And there's all of our fragment code. So that prepares that. That's the shader code right there. It doesn't do anything until we pass that into a new shader. So new shader. This is in Zim015. So a new shader will make it the width and the height of the stage and pass in the fragment code like so. We need to add that to the stage. 
or center it, whatever. Okay. So we set the width and height to be the whole stage. We're passing in the fragment code there and we're adding that to the stage. Now let's see what we've got open in default browser. A bit of an error. Oh, right. I'm in my template. I'm in a, uh, uh, there's another thing that's different with my template in that I'm calling local files here. And I'm currently in a shaders directory inside of 016. So you would in your template have the import of 016 there. go so we're going to import 016 and my, my local I'd, I'd have to go back one more directory to get to where I was going so this is giving us an error at the time saying it couldn't even find create js and zim so there we go now if we refresh ooh, there it is isn't that nice I'll refresh there's the shader now as nice as this is remember that it's not your shader so don't just put this in your project and say, oh, look at what I made. Um, you'll need to at least credit it. And if you're doing a project for a school or something like that, just uh, be careful of that kind of stuff. Um, you may even want to go to where in Shader Toy right here. You see how you've got comments? Oh, how do you do this? How amazing. That's great. And some people say in here, um, I love this. I've used it in this project. And most of the time, I think that uh, they, there's 48 comments here, but just take a look. Maybe they're saying, don't use it. Maybe they're saying, go ahead and use it. Many of the shader things, we're talking like thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of examples of shaders here. Most of them are variations of existing concepts of formulas and stuff. This one is not. This one is like totally an art piece. So watch it. This is somebody's art. But in many of the shader examples, you will find that, um, for instance, there's a shader where we made a circle. So if we look up circle here, how do we make a circle? There's one right there, simple circle. Okay, you can probably grab most of this with, uh, you know, you can still credit it if you want, but everybody's making circles and you know it's not it's pretty tricky to make circles we we have a circle example why don't we go through this circle example ourselves and see what's involved in it okay does that sound good but i'm just saying if you go and grab somebody's stuff from shader toy then make sure that you give them credit and just watch how you're using it as well if it's something that uh, using as a background like we at Zim, we've used this spiral as a background right out here. And in the code, we've credited it. We didn't put credit kind of like right here on the banner, but in the code, it's credited uh, because it's sort of like a, a fairly, plus we changed some things about it, but it's fairly traditional code. We're making a spiral. Everybody, Lots of people have made spirals before. I'm not so worried about it. But as soon as you get into more uh, custom things, like especially this one, for instance, uh, this one's a piece of art. We want to make sure that we know who did that and that we didn't. OK. Uh, back here, we have a circle. So this is the one that we're going to take a look at right here. Here we are dragging it around in Zim. We're also wiggling that circle. So not only did we make a circle, but we're wiggling it. But there's a link to it. And I think that's the, the link we probably came from. What do you think? J Joan Bohr or something. Yeah, Joan Bohr right there. So that probably links back to this as a reference. All right, let's go in and take a look at that code then, shall we? That's here. On, but it wasn't that nice. We made a landscape in, not well, <laughs> obviously. There's a lot of work that went into doing that. I have no idea what's going on through a lot of this. Um, and it probably took somebody quite some time and also skill to complete this over time. We're, there we are using noise. We use noise. Smooth step. Zim's got smooth step. Zim's got noise. So I recognize some of the things that are in here, but heck, it's, it's a lot of sines and cosines and so forth. So shader code is 
tricky. It's a, it's a lot and it's a little. It's actually meant to be quite efficient, but uh, they accom accomplish that efficiency through some tricks. They try not to use for loops. They try not to use conditionals even. They're trying to accomplish most of it uh, through things that the GPU will find very fast. So it's a whole new world. Our point here in this explore is not to, you know, not to teach you everything there, but hopefully get your feet wet. Uh, basically know as much as I know. <laughs> That's sort of <laughs> where I'm trying to get you. And we're going to take a look at the circle here. There it is. And we're in Zim. 016. And we are also bringing an icon. So this is, let's open this locally. This has the shader toy icon. It's got who it's by and it's got our footer there. And so there's the circle stuff, but this stuff is the footer. Here we're setting up our uniforms to wiggle or we're wiggling our uniforms right on a new uniforms. And we're making a shader passing in our uniforms. Isn't that nice? So in the last Explorer, we talked about uniforms and we wiggled the uniform. So we have a center of the circle and it looks like we're, of the, oh, the center it has a width and a height, width and a height, a 500, 500 uh, by, divided by two. So we've got a 500 by 500 shader. That's this orange thing right here. We've got a yellow background and we've got a circle in there that we're wiggling. So that's how we made our uniforms. Then we're wiggling the A version of it. When we have a uniform like that, center underscore A represents the first one as a property. So you can wiggle it and animate it. That just makes it easier. Uh, and then center underscore B would be the height. So this is just normal Zim stuff. There we are making the width and the height of 500, 500. Passing in the fragment, which is up above. That's what we're really here for, is finding out what's in that fragment. Passing in the unicorn, centering the whole thing. <laughs> to catch that. Passing in the uniform, not the unicorn, uh, but whatever. <laughs> Should we have called them unicorns? Hey, let's make a new unicorn. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're centering and dragging that. So... That's quite nice. Uh, log of true. Oh, we've got a log going on there. So when we log, if we F12, it will tell us what our fragment shader is and what our vertex shader is. So I don't know. Let's clear this thing and run it once. I'm not sure if it logged it more than once. So our vertex shader, this is a default vertex shader. This is actually showing what is in that, including all of our various floats that we brought in. So those are the ones that we're bringing in, or I think maybe even one of them or two of them might be our own, but I'm not sure. So those are the default uniforms. We're setting a precision there. And then this is all that's in the uh, vertex shader. Okay. And then what is in the fragment shader, which is what we're doing, and we're going to take a look at that. Here's the stuff that got added up above. And then from then on, it's what we actually passed in. And I'm not sure why a vertex and a fragment shader are coming through twice. Interesting. Okay. Um, that is the logging. Which gets turned on where? Oh as a style, but it's a parameter of the shader just further on. So if you didn't log that, then you won't find out what those are. Here is our fragment shader then. Center will be wiggled outside Zim, so we need a uniform, or outside in Zim, so we need a uniform. There's our uniform vec2 of center, and that matches our uniform here called center that has two things that we're passing into our shader. So we need to declare that if we're going to use it. Prepare a function to convert RGB 0 to 255. Remember, it's 256 colors, but we start at 0, so it goes 0 to 255. 2 is 0 to 1. 
So this function allows us to pass in RGB in numbers that we're used to, 0 to 255 for red, green, and blue but then converts it to divide it by 255. Note the point decimal zero there, because we'd be bringing in a float, and if we just said divide it by 255, that would give us an error in our code. So come into here, and refresh here. Uh, should be an error, are we local? Did I save it? Hmm. Okay, let's turn off the log so I can see better. I didn't save it. So there's that, and I'm going to turn off the logs, commenting on the style, and we save that up and refresh here. There is the wrong operand type, uh, where it's saying it can't divide a left-hand operand of medium float and a right-hand operand of an int. All right, so that's something that you'll get quite often, probably, when you're working for New, we're, we're used to in JavaScript not not caring that we divided by 255, but there's divided by 255 decimal would be fine, just like that, or decimal zero is also okay. Okay, we probably use that down below, RGB, do you see it anywhere? Mm, RGB, and there we are passing in some RGB colors. That is being... Uh, spread in a sense into a vec4. So this is RGB is three a vec3, but then we're adding the last alpha uh, there on our vec4. Anyway, I jumped ahead. So that's a function that we're going to be using. Here's another function called circle that will return a vec4. This function RGB returns a vec3. This function right here doesn't return anything, and it's, it returns void. However, we do specify a frag color because that's our out variable, frag color, right there. So whatever we're putting in frag color will be output to the shader um, uh, bitmap, the dynamic bitmap pins in. Okay, so coming back up here, here's our circle. Here's how we made a circle. Prepare a function to see if each point that's UV point, and that's what they call a texture uh, XY basically, is inside or outside a radius. So we're gonna get this radius, and we're gonna find out is this point inside or outside that radius? And then if it's inside, we'll set it to one color, and if it's outside, we'll set it to a different color. So from wherever the center of the circle is located, and this is a position based on the center uniform. All right, so based on our center uniform, that's where the center of it is. So we're receiving the UV, that's a VEC2, X and Y basically. We're receiving a pose, which is, well, uh, we're gonna call it pose. It will also have XY, that will be our center. And then we've got a float, which is a radius, I guess. So that's gonna be our radius value and our color value. Then we say, hey, make a diameter probably of the length or a length from the pose to the UV. So that's how far is um, our point to the center. And we're subtracting the radius from that. All right, so as we move along, basically this is scanning, it's going 0, 0, 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, etc., all the way to 1, except it's smaller, it's pixels based on, you know, how, how wide it is. So well, I guess we go 0 all the way to the width. All right, so that's what it's scanning. So it's checking the length, and is that within uh, the radius? Then we're clamping that value, and the length, I suppose, is doing some calculation on the 2B, so that maybe that's not quite right. Uh, yeah, we're finding out if the point is within that, because we're passing in the UV has 2, this has 2, so length probably figures out the length between that. Subtracting the radian. Heck, I'm not sure how that's working, but it's something like that. Anyway, then we're clamping that distance. This is subtle right here, what we've got. We're clamping that distance, and if it's less, it will be zero. If it's more, it will be one. And if it's a decimal, so it's in between. So if it's the length 0.2, then 
the value will be a 0.2 rather than a 1. Um, if it's a 0 0.7 in between, like a, it's it's within 0 to 1, but it's 0 0.7, then it's going to be a 0.7 here. But if it's outside, it will be 0, and if it's inside, it will be 1. Okay, or is it the reverse? I'm not sure which, which one it is. The subtlety of this is we've just dithered. So instead of it being a zero or one in terms of our color, it's going to end up, and we're, we're doing this on the alpha, I think. Uh, we're going to say, hey, set the alpha to this value. So it'll be either zero or one, but if it's within one, then it's going to be a gradient. And so that will give us a dithered edge to the circle. Otherwise we would see a choppy circle. So that's what I mean. You've got all these little tricks, and I think that that's the trick here. <laughs> like I said, I'm not the best at that, but uh, I think that's what's happening. So this is a little trick to give us a dithered circle. In other words, a smooth edge circle rather than a choppy circle. I would like to demonstrate that, but I really don't know how to get from here to here without clamping it in the first place. So, and I could even be wrong. <laughs> um, but anyway. There we go. Then what we're doing is we're returning a VEC4 of the color. Hmm, so the color has three. So the color, it'll be this color. Yes, make it this color. But make it one minus that clamped value. So alpha zero if outside the radius. So basically it will be this color because we're gonna, it just makes this, it just, it draws everything, including outside the circle, but it's drawing alpha zero outside the circle. And when we're inside the circle, it draws an alpha of one. And if we're on the edge of that, then it's going to be uh, an alpha that sort of fades from zero to one. And that will end up giving us this smooth circle. You want to see the smooth circle? No, talking about. We refresh here. Hopefully we don't have that error anymore. See, look at that circle. That's got nice, that's nice and smooth. We would be able to tell if it were chunky, it would go chicka, 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 and we'd see these little square pixels on it, but we're actually got a nice smooth circle there. This one has a nice smooth circle too, but that's in Zim. We do that for you as well. Okay, so uh, that is all what's making the circle. Let's go on down here. This is the function that is running that this is our default function that runs. We bring in our frag, or sorry, we send out our frag color, frag color, and we bring in frag chords, so we know that. Now when we make our circle, we're going to end up passing in the UV, which is really our frag chords there. So we come back here, we're setting up a radius, 0.25 times the resolution, so that's basically a quarter, the radius, uh, sorry about that, the radius is a quarter of our stage here. And that makes the, the diameter a um, half the stage. Okay, you could hard code a number there if you wanted to. Uh, layer one is one color. So there's us saying, hey, it's some color there. Don't know quite what that is. If we go zero here, then we could probably tell better red okay so that would be red if we want to make it not red but not. I'm going to drag that over there and pick up this and drag it over here okay so there we go red with a there's blue so now we have a blue background okay Here's the circle is red, so VEC3 red, there's the red color. And then we're making a layer here that is a circle. So layer two is going to be a circle. We're gonna pass in red as the color for the circle. We have the radius, we have the center, and there's the frag coordinates X and Y. Okay, that makes the circle. This is the background color. How do we get these two? We mix them based on the alpha. So mix the two layers with a mix that comes with um, 
OpenGL. We mix the two layers and use the alpha to choose that. And that's our output. So there we go in Zim. This would be new circle. The radius, which would be W divided by four. So I can hit a four. And the color, which would be red. We would position that dot center. There's Zim. Here is a shader. <laughs> ah! Alrighty, I'm going to undo this though. Oh, that means I have to go through the undoing of the undoing uh, the, and bring this back to whatever color we had here, which was this nice orangey color. There's our orangey color. And we're dragging that shader because down below, when we made our shader right here, we had dot drag. Okay, we could scale that dot ska. Oh, my fingers are cold. I'm downstairs. And it's in Canada. I'm in Canada. We're wintering. 0.5. So there's a scale of 0.5. And we refresh here. And now we have a smaller version of that happening. So this is a dynamic bitmap. The shader is a dynamic bitmap. It doesn't have to be dynamic. If you don't want it to be dynamic, then you can pass in... Uh, a parameter to the shader. I think it's the not the next one, but the one after that. And that would go in here. It says false. And then it wouldn't automatically update. We would have to manually update it with a shader or s dot update in this case because we're stored in s. Okay, so we've seen how to bring in code. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look at some other code that may have come in. For instance, here's a spiral. We brought in an external G uh, GLSL file. And here's that external GLSL file. So if you don't want to work within Zim inside of the back ticks, note that we're not getting any color syntaxing. Makes it a little bit harder. You can put this outside in an external file and then load it in like that. And then uh, use asset to bring that in. Normally, we're making a new pick, a new odd for sound, a new vid, SVG, whatever. So, but here uh, to bring in text, we don't have a new text, or uh, it'd be kind of odd. I wonder if we could do that one day. But anyway, if you want to bring in JSON or bring in text, you just load it as an asset. That's the old way of bringing in Zim assets with the asset function. Here's Spiral 2. So Spiral 2, if we look at this code in the default browser, is giving us this spiral right here. And in this case, we're using a fill mode uh, and what the fill mode does is it's sort of a nice, easy way that we can make this shader fill the whole of the stage. So you see how we're not in the fit mode anymore. And that means that we'll have to take these guys on the outsides and move them about a bit. So down below here, we're doing a frame dot on resize. We're position, repositioning our stuff around the outside on a frame dot resize. There's our shader, and here's the code that we copied from Shader Toy. Here's another spiral, and this is the code that we copied from Shader Toy, and there we made the shader from it. And this one is sort of not exact, well, it is a spiral, but there's a spiral of dots in there, and that's what we're using for our icon there as well. Here is one that's a nice interactive one. Okay, that gives us this right here. Ooh. So in this case, we're getting where the mouse is, but we don't have to worry about that. That's all done uh, because we're, we've got a, uh, a uniform that is handling that for us, for the mouse position. Okay, so once again, we just 
take whatever they had made for the fragment. It's outputting, outputting that. And you can go through and take a look at this and see how it was done. I don't know where that uniform there's resolution, resolution, I mouse right there, I mouse, X and Y based uh, and then based on the resolution, that's saying where to do something in this business right in here. Right, we do have a checkerboard and we might do another explore to look through the three types of checkerboards. There's a checkerboard for the vertex shader for the fragment shader and also bringing in an image. And that was from a blog. So maybe we should take a look at how we did those three things, what's involved there. But we have seen in this Zim Explore some exciting things. Yay! Did you like that? So come on and visit us at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash forum or forum zimjs.com and we'd love to see you there i am dr abstract have a great day or night Woohoo! cheers <laughs>